Here in Baltimore, the situation is particularly dire, fueled in part by a legacy of racism and an extreme lack of economic mobility. I don't think that people are getting up every morning and saying, who am I going to go shoot today? I think people are getting up saying, how am I going to eat today? And if someone prevents them from doing what they think they have to do in order to feed themselves and their families, there's a ripe opportunity for violence. Baltimore City has seen 250 murders so far this year. Once Most violence starts, it spread. You can see the gun in his left hand. The gunman is still on the loose here in Baltimore. When you kill this person, brother, then they want to retaliate and they want to make somebody feel the pain that they felt. So they become shooters and killers. It's like a, it's like a demon. It, it, it's spread from souls to souls. Without the resources to fix the underlying problems, this neighborhood is turning to an innovative intervention to reduce violence. With respect to violence, we're stuck in the past. Our thinking now is medieval. We're blaming people, not understanding what's going on actually not applying approaches that have been shown to work. For epidemiologist Gary Slutkin, those approaches are based on data. After returning from over a decade fighting infectious diseases in Africa, he recognized a distinct pattern. I'm looking at a graph of violence that looks exactly like the graph of cholera. I'm looking at the map of the clustering of violence. It looks exactly like the mapping of AIDS. So I'm like saying, oh my God, you know, this is I, exactly like every infectious disease. And just like a disease, under certain conditions, violent acts are contagious. One case of violence causes more cases of violence, just as one case of flu causes more cases of flu. So could the same methods used to fight infectious diseases also stop shootings? The shootings that we have had, most of them ease to us inside here. That's an idea being tested at Baltimore's Safe Streets, one of a growing number of programs adopting Slutkin's approach. It's just a lot of shootings going on in the neighborhood, so we was really trying to get to the bottom of that. The starting point in any epidemic is to detect where the next event might occur and interrupt the exposure. So what are we going to do today for canvassing? I mean, there's it been a lot of things going on in the neighborhood, so I'm going to just take a tour. To do that, Slutkin created a new type of public health worker, a violence interrupter. A violence interrupter is basically a health worker who can know what is going on and find where an event might be likely to happen, and then prevent its progression. So you're cutting off the epidemic spread itself. The first step in fighting any epidemic is to identify the initial outbreaks, the so-called hotspots. The red dots are the firearm homicides, and the yellow dots are the non-fatal shootings. So if we map out all of the violence in the area, then we can sort of see like, oh, there's a cluster up here in the right where the stash should be focusing on. Maybe down here on the left, there's another little area that we tend to see more violence happening. And then we base our program decisions on that data. Once the hotspots are pinpointed, the violence interrupters are deployed. Lately, there's been a lot of activity in the community, so we just coming through, try to make sure everything at peace. This team works in Park Heights, one of the most dangerous neighborhoods in the city. Most of the violence is, is spontaneous, so we just try to do our walk so we can be there to try to catch it. What really make the program is the guys that's out here doing the footwork, doing the groundwork, because it's our credibility that really keep the peace. We just try to getting everybody heads and everybody mind and let them know the shootings and homicides are not normal. This is not normal for somebody to lay right there with five and six bullet holes in them and he's dying and that ain't Hello. normal for kids to see. It ain't normal for a mother to lose her son to senseless violence like that.
Steve Diggs, better known as Pepe, knows these streets. I'm born in Bray Park Ice. I've been here my entire life. If you drop me in the ocean in the middle of the night, I'll start swimming towards Park Heights. <laughs> and he knows all about the violence. I fell in love with the streets. The whole lifestyle of girls, money, the respect that you get in your neighborhood, you know, all the way down to the part where I had to bust somebody in the head. Disrespecting me. I could get a person beat nearly to death. Has gotten people beat nearly to death. I had to sit in jail for 10 months because I beat a guy nearly to death. I was that person for 30 years. I had to let that person die and create this person right here. That's what qualifies all of us to do this. You walk to walk, talk to talk, you qualified to intervene. She told me that she was going to the police station and fill out a report on you. For what? I didn't do anything to her. And what Today, Pepe is following up on a violent altercation. I couldn't understand how I got that Look at my the face. She beat me in my face, kicked me in my back. I felt a threat. She's right, yelling, going. belligerent. We, we're going to do it one at a time, OK? You went to me like this. No, uh-uh. Yes, uh -uh. you did. And then that's when I blacked out on you. You was pummeling me. All right. I, because you're Take. trying to grab stuff. I don't know what you're I'm doing. I'm my phone. You. See how you doing? Right you're now, not... y'all not listening to each other. I know, but you're not hearing nothing saying. she said because you're she so ready to talk back. Maybe it's something else. I don't have a problem. Regardless, I want to leave because I feel out of place. Even though I knew they wasn't listening to each other. I think it was very helpful because they feel like they vindicated. For them to be able to do that on their own, they wouldn't have been able to do it because it would have just went on and on and on until when I'm through a punch. Women fight way differently from men. Guys, they run for their knife or their gun, which is so sad. Later, Pepe is dispatched to defuse a potentially deadly dispute. Unfortunately, we live by the gun around here, man. They the man Pepe is talking to says that two nights ago, he ordered a revenge killing. But his guys shot at the wrong person. And now, that person wants to take revenge. Let me see your hands, yo. You see my Let me yo, see your hands, yo. You yo. come around here for no smoke. You didn't come around here for no smoke, you right? Hands, you didn't, you didn't come around here man. for no smoke, right? Right? Listen, listen. For no smoke. Tell them what you just told me, yo. Let me see your hands, yo. Let me see your hands. Keep man. your hands out your pocket. You're making me nervous, yo. What this dude here, man, I'm going to tell you something, man. We're going to go a lot different in this fight. And I know that. I know who you is. I know who you is. Because I'm not with none of you right here. That's how you know it's not going to happen again. Right? You were just saying thing, though. I would get the same thing. I would get the All same right, thing. Okay, now we got common ground. We got common ground. You would have. Can we agree that you apologize, yo? Absolutely. I'm gonna accept that, yeah, man. man. But I'm gonna tell you this, man. You don't come back from that death. It ain't no coming back from that. Yeah, yeah don't shake his hand. Yeah, man. Don't shake his hand. I mean, like. Watch it, yo. Oh, man, I'm going to just leave this be, man. Facts, yo. Facts. a hell of a mistake to make. We are guys right directly in these neighborhoods that can bring these two guys together in the midst of their anger, their hatred, and their want for revenge and bring about a peaceful resolution. That's a big part of what Safe Streets do. A lot of times, guys want to put an end to the conflict, especially when them guns get to going. The State Street guys give him a way to 
get out of there because you all right see street squads and so now i'm not looking like a punk now i'm not looking like um i'm scared of nothing but it's not just about that people out here really need resources not justifying nothing but a lot of people be surprised what people be going through all right okay so what's the next part what you gotta do what you gotta do to get yourself right though Stop all this up. I mean, drugs are the only time to get a job. I swear it's so hard for me to try. Because you know what? We gotta deal with one thing at a time. You know what I'm saying? We gotta deal with the big issue. It ain't funny, yo. A lot of violence comes from lack of. That's a lack of education. That's a lack of food. That's a lack of basic necessities like clothes, water. When we interrupt the violence and we take a look at what the precipitating factors are that contributed to the violence, we see opportunity to connect folk to additional services of support. And those services could range anywhere from mental health, substance abuse, housing, transportation, things that help people get on their feet so that they don't have to rely on the streets to feed themselves and their families. While Safe Streets connects people to a host of community services, they're not designed to take on the root causes of violence. Their success is measured in two key metrics, shootings and killings. While surrounding neighborhoods continue to see high levels of firearm homicide, from 2017 to 2018, the Park Heights Post went 382 days without a single killing. and people are starting to take notice. Over 50 sites around the world have adopted the approach practiced by Cure Violence. And the data is clear. It's working. Because they come from the public health,